Hello and welcome out to Shawnee High School, where this afternoon we have the Kent Wildcats invading Indian Territory tonight. WBL play between Kenton and Shawnee. Boys soccer here, and Garrett Bansu alongside with Josiah Snowbur. And we have a contest that really is going to have the attention of the entire WBL boys soccer landscape, and this more than likely will determine how the league goes. For the last several years, this has been Shawnee's to own. They have a, a good test and a good Kenton team to defend it against here tonight at home. But Josiah, this is a one of those contests you circle on the calendar each and every year, and here we are enjoying what should be another good one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of those that we're excited to broadcast here um, at WOSN, looking at these two teams, you know, top of the league for the Western Buckeye League, you know, teams that know each other very well, um, you know, teams that, you know, they circle each other um, on their schedule each year. Um, and as we look at some of the keys, too, from our um, head coaches, and they were nice enough to give us some information before the game, and we love when coaches yep. do that. Um, but looking for the visiting uh, Wildcats, um, coached by Jamie Bartlett, um, some things that he had talked about, you know, obviously they have to shut down Austin Miller, leading scorer for the Shawnee Indians, coming in with 27 goals um, on the year. So has to be a foc focus, have to know where he's at all the time um, on the soccer field, and obviously um, keeping them scoreless just like any game, <laughs> you know, you're trying to do. But, you know, they pride themselves on their defense um, and then all on the attack as they got to maintain possession um, on that counter. Um, and here in a little bit, we'll come back and look at some yep. of Shawnee's uh, keys to the game. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at just the, the tail of the tape right now as there's a good look inside the box and near the top of the box for Shawnee. Mateo Facillo just glides that one just to the left of the, the, uh, no, the post there, man, we'll see. For Shawnee, they come in with a record of 10-1-1. They're 7-0 in the Western Buckeye League. They are the sixth ranked team of the entire state, according to the Division II poll that has come out. And uh, 62 goals for, just 10 allowed. Most recently, a 7-0 win over Iowa Glandorf earlier in this week. And for Kenton on the flip side, they're 10-2-1 and entering competition tonight. 6-0-1 in the WBL. They're the 17th best team in D2, according to that same poll. And uh, yeah, obviously this is one where late in the year, Josiah, the winner here is going to be in the driver's seat with just a little bit of cleanup at the, the tail end, both with one more game and league play to go beyond this one. But uh, this is the one that could dictate who takes the league. And Shawnee in the last several years, they have done just that 2019, 2020, 2021, three in a row. And they're on a roll of 36 consecutive league wins. And they're wearing a... The black kids tonight here at home under the lights at Shawnee. Yeah, as we look at some keys from Coach Quatman, uh, you know, they want to continue to play their game. Um, they want Kenton to have to adjust um, to the way and their style of play out here as they see early as they want to possess the ball. Um, they want to be patient, um, you know, not exactly go direct early. They want to possess it. Um, try to switch the ball side to side um, as much as they can. Um, but they also just want to outwork Canton. And they know Canton has a solid defense, only giving up eight goals um, all year. So they know they have to be a little bit patient, work the ball around, uh, find those lanes to attack them and, and, and kind of be, you know, tactical in their approach moving forward. Um, and and they, they want to take advantage of their chances that they get. They know they're going to get some um, tonight, and they just got to take advantage of them. Absolutely. And they're possessing the ball quite a bit here early on. Luca Facillo giving a look at that ball here in the near corner. Good tackle attempt by, for Jason Dyer of Kenton. And Luca still trying to advance that ball. And, Going to get wrestled away from him. Seth Manns with the takeaway there for Kenton. Let's meet the starters of the night. First for the, the home Shawnee Indians with the ball at their feet right now. In net all the way to the other side of our screens. And the, that bright blue kid is going to be Jack Tenwaldi, the senior keeper for the, the Indians. You have Luca Facillo wearing number five. Alex McGuire is number six. Number seven is Matteo Facillo. Sam Tenwaldi is number eight. Number nine is Noah Schneid. Uh, Colin Schneid is number 10. Austin Miller, number 11. Playing in the middle there. Noah Neff is wearing number 14. Ethan Parlapiano is number 22. And Caleb Miller wearing a 40. That's Shawnee again. There are the black kits for you tonight. That's the one thing. The Kenton and Shawnee have you know, very similar color scheme, so I had to point that out. For Kenton, here is their starters out there uh, for Coach Jamie Bartlett. Uh, in the, the fluorescent yellow in net is MJ Colson as he gets the attack here from uh, Miller, and Austin Miller tripped up at the top of the box. No call there, and we're going to play on. 
Here's Parla Piano. Gives it up to uh, Luca Facillo. Or excuse me, now to uh, Matteo. Giving up to Luca now. Luca with a little shake. Tries to get inside that goal box and it's knocked away. Let's get the rest of that Kenton lineup. Joel Bowman wears number one. Ethan Yoder is number four. Number 10 is Colby Quay. Seth Manns is number 11. Connor Daffelball leading scorer in that Kenton team wears number 12. Devin Hastings is number 16. Aiden Wood, 17. Jason Dyer, 23. Troy Brown, 24. And Parker Rary is 25. There's our starters here tonight. But early and often here for Shawnee, trying to find something in the early stages of this game because you know Josiah, you get an early score, you can really take some of the juice out and put it in your own favor early. Yeah, and as we see here early is uh, the Shawnee team a lot of time in the attacking third here against this and a great ball in there to Austin Miller and you can see his ability just to get up and uh, has a little bit of a size advantage in the box and almost two in a row where he just ha hasn't been able to connect with a good header. As Sam Tenwaldi trying to line that second one up for him. And Shawnee quickly wrestles the ball right on back. There's Alex McGuire, feeds it to the right for Tenwaldi. He sends this one in through. It's going to get Ricochet around. Kent able to clear it out. Jason Dyer redirected that in there for Kenton. And it's going to bound all the way back for Caleb Miller. And they'll be content to play it back to Jack there. And the Shawnee keeper. Punts that one right on downfield. Yeah, we can see the difference of play already. You know, early in, Shawnee wants to possess the ball, try to get it wide, see if they can attack and get a good cross in the box, you know, especially for those um, Austin Miller with that size in the middle. And, and Kenton, like you said, is, you know, comfortable, you know, seeing if they can boot it forward, um, see if they can attack on that counter as much as possible here. And um, as it got a good attack here and a good through ball and just that Shawnee defense was ready for it as Kenton wrestles it back. Yeah, here goes Connor Daffelball. First real look for the Kenton leading scorer. Tries to advance that one through the box to Colby Quay, but it gets disrupted, intercepted by Shawnee. And now Kenton will toss it back. Dyer with the throw. And a ricochet is off the Shawnee player and off of Kenton as well. Looks like the last there, Noah Scheid for Shawnee. Seth Mann sends it back into play for Kenton. He'll put that one all the way through and beyond the oh, okay. goal line. So a kick on goal kick on the way for Shawnee. That was fed down there by Ethan Yoder. Yeah, a little bit of space there from Ethan Yoder as he uh, was able to settle the ball and turn and took a strike and you know, a good distance to the right. But Kenton will be happy to take those opportunities when they get it, see if they can um, use those chances down on their attacking thirds and see if they can squeak one by. Here's Austin Miller getting pretty deep and try to keep it in front of him, keep that momentum going. Devin Hastings was able to disrupt the momentum. Here's Luca Facillo plays it back for Shawnee. It's Noah Neth. Pass ahead, trying to go there for top of the box for the Indians and knocked out by Joel Bowman. Yeah, and a great flick there as, you know, just got a little bit on it to keep it out of the reach of Austin Miller. And um, as we said earlier in the broadcast, Kenton, you know, only giving up eight goals all year. So, you know, they're willing to kind of sit back a little bit and try to take some of this attack from this Indians team. and. Now we see as they're in the attacking third and trying to use some of their opportunities. Goal, Kobe Quay launches that one over the net for Kenton. They had one lined up in the middle there for a moment, but it was cleared away by Caleb Biller. And now Shawnee will pull back and take over. Kenton and Shawnee a year ago met twice. 4-1 was the regular season win for Shawnee in the WBL and then a 1-0 win in the district tournament. Wildcats finished 9-3-6 and, and have continued to improve year after year. Already double-digit wins here in early October. There's a, a bat away for Jack Tenwaldi in net for Shawnee. This ball bounces its way out to Luca Facillo, and look at him go. It's three-on-five attack for Shawnee. Luca feeds that one down on into the box, and it'll miss to the right, and Kenton will take over on their goal kick now. 
Um, both teams are not shy about using that counterattack to their advantage, as we saw there uh, for Shawnee as they found themselves, you know, we're outnumbered, um, but they had Kenton running backwards. And as an attacking player, that's exactly mm -hmm. where you want the defense to be is uh, facing backwards. And they were able to do that as Kenton has once again used that counterattack here to get it quickly up the field and allows their team to get up very quickly and a great ball into the middle. Mans centering pass to Ethan Yoder. He had a little too much mustard on it and sent it over top of the frame. Gets a goal kick here for Kenton, but or for Shawnee, but Kenton has had a couple of chances to at least get a good leg into the ball, have not put it on target to this point. And a long, long kick sent in the air for Jack Tenwaldy. Kent will play this back. And it'll be Shy that picks it up. Carson Frost, first to get back there for Shawnee. Austin Miller, nice back and forth between he and Mateo Facillo, and he almost played that through the legs of Aiden Wood. The Kenton defender able to send it back his the way, his way. Here's Caleb Miller on defense for Shawnee. Trying to clear that out. Parker Rario played it forward for a moment. And that'll go out near side. Throw in for Kenton on the way. Uh, both teams are seeming to find a little bit of space in that midfield. Uh, especially on those quick counters that both teams have used tonight is there's a lot of space, gives a lot of, you know, opportunities for, you know, finding those through balls or finding those direct plays. And, and so far tonight, both teams have, have used it pretty effectively, you know, just haven't really got a clear shot on goal yet. Ted Wally stop and punt back into play. They're really impressed early on with the possession by both teams. Being able to move the ball, crisp passes early. Good ball handling. So we knocked back in there. It's a foot race here for a moment. And Kenton able to clear it out. Test the brakes there. <laughs> It'll bound all the way to the other side of the street. Still Shawnee ground. But a good stop for Kenton's Troy Brown. He didn't want any Shawnee Indian to get close to that whatsoever. And here's a header through for Austin Miller, and it's 1-0 Shawnee. Well, once again, you could just see how threatening he is in that box. You know, just a, a ball, a 50-50 ball played really well you know, from that right side of the field, and Austin Miller goes up, meets it with his head, and puts it in the back of the net. We'll take our first time out. It's 1-0 Shawnee in WBL Soccer Action on WOSN. Welcome back to Shawnee, where the Indians have a 1-0 lead over Kenton on our scoreboard tonight that is presented by Home Savings and Loan of Kenton, committed to serving our community since 1888, offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Garrett Mansfield along with Josiah Stober, and Shawnee was able to just find something off of a throw in and it formulated and got a, the header to the big man in the middle, Austin Miller. Okay. Yeah, and you've, you've seen a couple opportunities from Shawnee. You know, they want to try to play him knowing that he's such an aerial threat um, inside of that box. And we saw it there. It's, it's, what a great ball, though, um, that was played in by his teammate, you know, to find him on the head. And, you know, you get a head on it six yards out, you know, there's a lot of chances it's going in the back of the net. And, um, he did a really good job, as we see him here, using some of his skill to maintain possession for this Shawnee Indians team. Yeah, the size, the speed. One of the many weapons on this program's roster. Luca Vasillo in the middle for Shawnee. Gave it up to Colin Shine, and then repositions to the outside on the right, going for Sam Tenwaldi, and it gets knocked away by Kenton. Couldn't completely clear it out, though. Luca making some headway where it's deflected out. And just look at this Shawnee defense, the, the, at least the, the back row, really, Josiah. They're right there to get in on the action to keep that, I guess, that, that offensive space or the defensive space, however you want to you frame it, though, but to keep Shawnee moving forward and keep that really compressed and not let the opposing team from flipping the field on them. 
Well, and as you said, you know, before our broadcast started, we were talking a little bit just about how they suffocate teams. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one thing, one way to do it is, you know, keep your entire defense on your attacking uh, part of the pitch and, um, you know, make them play over the top, which I think Kenton's accustomed to. But, you know, that's also putting a lot of trust in your goalkeeper, mm -hmm. you know, to clean up any of those long balls that come in. So, you know, they're not allowing Kenton to gain any possession while they're doing it here. And we got a little bit of a battle in the box here. An empty net for a little bit. MJ Colson came out, thought that uh, little attempt in by Luca Facilla was going to be a little too, or, you know, could be dangerous. So he came out, trying to make a stop, a couple of deflections, and Mateo got there and almost had the angle to put it back. But instead, Kenton could breathe a sigh of relief. They'll have a Goal kick on the way. Marlon Lopez checks into the contest for the Wildcats. Again, these are two, two teams with state recognition in the rankings. Thanks to the coaches for doing that. And a lot of respect for this Shawnee program and Kenton getting it just as well here in Northwest Ohio, adding to the brand of Northwest Ohio high school soccer, especially within the WBL. Look at Shawnee and Kenton, the last many district championships have been owned by one of these two programs. And in fact, for Shawnee, they haven't stopped there the last three years. Three straight trips to the regional championship game, birth into the Final Four one time in 2020. Here's a look up just be front of the box for Austin Miller. His shot goes in, but it's knocked away. Devin Hastings got in the way. Well, you just see how quick he reacts to the ball as, you know, takes a shot, gets a deflection by one of the Kenton defenders, and right away he's, you know, on that next ball, you know, getting his head up, getting his team continued possession, which, you know, after a while, you know, just as good a defense as you have from Kenton, you know, you're going to get tired, you know, from playing defense. So, you know, you got to... You got to find some possession mm -hmm. somewhere if you're this Kenton Wildcats team and, you know, just allow your back line to kind of catch their breath um, and force this uh, Shawnee defense to, on their heels a little bit. Austin Rosebeck enters for Shawnee. Another item here, Indians are not giving Kenton a whole lot of space to really pass the ball. It seems like they have a foot on it each and every time. Sends that one just above the the net there for Miller, and it's going to get tipped away. Shawnee will throw it in. Yeah, good tackle there in the box by Joel Bauman as um, just trying to keep this defense organized as they continue to be, you know, attacked from this Shawnee Indians team. So, um, like I said, you know, they got to find a way to possess the ball for a little bit. And, you know, they just can't keep kicking mm -hmm. it and playing defense the entire game. Uh, like I said, their coach says that's what they, you know, hang their hat on is their defense, but. You know, after a while with as many skilled players mm -hmm. that the Shawnee Indians team have, you know, you just can't sit back the entire time. Luca Vasillo goes down into the corner for the Indians to do their first corner of the night. First corner for either team. Almost halfway through this opening half. He's going to curl it near the top of the 15. Good header set down by Colin Shine, but good defense for Kenton to not give it up. Number 11, Seth Well, Kenton quickly getting the ball and seeing if they can catch this Shawnee Indians defense out of position, but a, a great play by the center back there, number 22, Ethan Papano, if I pronounced it. Parla Piano. Close. Parla Piano. But a great defensive possession there by him to kind of stop that attack by the Kenton Wildcats. It's scooped up by MJ Colson. Kenton will restart play as we're almost halfway through this first half of play, 1-0 with Shawnee on top this evening. Shine trying to shake in his defender. Got it rid of it to Alex McGuire. Now Shawnee will continue to head towards their goal. Out to Austin Rosebeck with some space on the left. Knocked it back to McGuire. Miller just waiting. Waiting for the ball. Shawnee being patient here with the advantage in the ball at their feet. To college shine, fed back to Rosebeck. Got Miller on that weak side of the of the net, and Rosebeck goes right at the frame yeah, and a little bit high. Colson uh, 
gave it a swap. Uh, it was no contact made there by the Kenton keeper. So a goal kick for the Wildcats. And as we said, you know, Shawnee is just really being patient, trying to possess the ball, you know, not giving Kenton a whole lot of space to get out of their defensive third here. You know, it's probably been, you know, a good five, six, seven minutes be between, you know, Kenton even getting the ball in their attacking mm -hmm. third. So Shawnee doing a great job of just possessing, trying to go side to side, you know, trying to find those little pockets of space uh, between this defense. So they're doing a really good job. You know, you, you almost feel like another one's going to be coming just because of the way they're playing so far early. They'll throw it in from almost near the corner. Bounces over, trying to go Austin Miller's direction. Turn up field by Seth Manns. And a good sliding stop in the middle for Shawnee. Caleb Miller just popped up out of nowhere there. Took that away from a... Connor Deffaball. And now Shawnee already penetrating pretty deep. There was a good look for Miller, just couldn't get it there. And Mateo Facillo flies one over the net, but that was point blank and right in the, the front there and could not quite line it up. Well, it's that second ball that's become so dangerous tonight for this Indians team as, you know, they, they got a great attack on the end line. Um, found their man in Austin Miller, you know, but you saw the, the Kenton defenders, about three men went right to him, um, and that ball bounced back to Facillo, and unfortunately just shot it a little bit high. A long run back for Colby Quay, and he's just going to be outnumbered as that ball bounds away from him. And Shawnee grabs the possession once more. Noah Scheid. Now right side to Alex McGuire, to Sam Tenwaldi. Trying to get by his man going right to the middle for Miller. Couldn't quite get there clean. Still in the box and cleared out by Kenton. Here we go, An opportunity here for Kenton as number 10, Colby Quay is able to take on, but you know, with your defense being forced so far back, the opportunities that you do have to go forward, your defense isn't connected uh, in the attack. So as we got a yellow card here early, um, in this match by Colby Quez, mm -hmm. the official did not like his actions on that last possession, so he's going to have to go off the field, get another sub in here shortly for Kenton, and he'll have to be on the bench a little bit before he can come back in. The, that whole play set up by the closing speed on defense by Noah Scheid, got back and had a good takedown from behind, and Quay popped up. They, they let them play on, and must have been what happened afterwards. It's gonna be frustrating at times. You get the ball down in your attack third of the field and opportunities have been so few and far between early in the game and you're already down one and it's trying to take advantage of maybe some numbers. And well, and when you have a counter attacking team, you know, that plays it so quick um, as I was just trying to say a little bit before is, you know, sometimes you're not connected. So you play that long ball, well, you know, then you're outnumbered um, the, as the attacker is outnumbered by the defender. So, you know, we saw that there is, you know, it was really two on one and there wasn't any support coming down the pitch uh, with to help him. And they just got a little frustrated. And then we saw something a little bit after the call. So, um, you know, as an attacking player, when you don't get the ball at your feet, that's where the mm -hmm. frustration happens. Here, Mateo Facillo in the middle. Finds Alex McGuire, now Sam Tenwaldi. Just so patient. Now Facillo gets a look before Kenton knocks it away from him. Now Caleb Miller keeps it up forward for Shawnee. Well, this defense is so good for Shawnee. We talked a little bit about Kenton's defense, but you know this Shawnee defense is anytime there's that long ball, it seems like they're right on it. Uh, keeping the possession in at the feet of their attacking players. And um, we just see, you know, the quality out on the field tonight. Kenton, Toss back in for Aaron Kenton. Aaron Mond will do it, but first, Ethan Blankenship, number three on three. Change for the Wildcats. Ethan Blankenship onto the pitch. Yeah, that takes Seth Manns out. 
First score of the game for Shawnee came at the 28-01 mark of this first half. Header sent in by Austin Miller. Luke back on for Shawnee. Noah Scheid to put the ball in the play. They left the players clear off, and now we're back. Ethan Parlapiano will play that back to the keeper for Shawnee, Jack Tenwaldi. Finds open field over on the right side. Noah Neff, pass ahead for Luca Facillo, and just ran out of room, but it was knocked out by Kenton. So the, the Indians will throw this ball right back in. Couldn't quite get it to Luca, but it bounds to the feet of. Noah Scheid, now Connell will send a pass to the right for Alex McGuire. Goes to the top of the box, Sam Tenwaldi, and wrestled away by Kenton again. Once again, a little bit of kickball there in the <laughs> middle by this Kenton team as they're trying to get it through this Indians defense. And first little possession here that Kenton's had in a while as we play that ball through, but Mm. will be scooped up by the Indians goalkeeper. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was the, the play you would have wanted. He had plenty of space with the ball there. He would have liked to see some, a little bit more touch. And with that, it turns into trouble on the other end. And you have Miller slightly shaken up here at the 15 and a half minute mark. So they tend to him. We'll take a quick timeout. one nothing Shawnee on WOSN. Welcome back to Shawnee, 15-21, one nothing Shawnee on the home savings and loan of Kenton scoreboard tonight. Indians, after the, the foul with Austin Miller going down and the top scorers on this Shawnee team for the, the club in black and red. He, he, middle of everything they do, just one of those that hopefully nothing malicious there and he was able to get off and limp to the Shawnee bench. Hopefully the strength comes back there as the night goes along for Shawnee, but they have so many different options, Josiah, and here they'll set up a direct kick. And Luca Facillo to the front and tried to head on through. I believe that was Colin Shy that tried to knock that through for Shawnee. But they'll keep, keep the ball forward in their third of the field. Well, it's one of those dangerous balls that, you know, right in the middle, the goalkeeper about that eight to, to 12 yard mark, you know, should I come out, should I not? Mm -hmm. You know, the keeper decided to come out, defender was there, you know, sometimes that in the, the heat of the moment, just that, you know, the communication isn't there, you know, and, and some of those things, you know, very much soccer is a game of luck. Sometimes the ball bounces where you want it. And, um, you know, we've seen that a couple times just with this Shawnee team is, you know, just continue to put balls into dangerous areas, you know, and, and you know, it's going to bounce in at some point. Absolutely. Shawnee out of a corner. They don't go towards the net, but they do right try to here. play for some tempo here and contact along that far side. Luca Facillo took some heavy contact. And I believe that was number 24, Troy Brown, with the foul there. Um, you know, one of those things where I think the, the Indian knew it was coming and uh, stepped in front and, and took the contact. And now they have a chance for a, a direct kick in a really good and a dangerous area. Luca will have the kick back in here. So where they decide to go here. Officials Doug Billerman, Daniel Lee. Making sure all the measurements are, everybody's as far away from the ball as they're supposed to be. As kick goes on top of the, get, the goal for Luca Facillo. Well, and they got a really good crew here tonight for this game. Known Doug Billerman for quite a many years. And, you know, I know he's done a couple state games. So, um, you know, with such a big game, they got some really good officials here. Um, tonight. Okay, throw in. Wildcats will throw in from 
down in front of the Shawnee right, bench. Metro. And the Indians wrestle the ball back pretty quickly. Pass in the direction of Dakota Miller. And he'll turn up field for the Indians. Being chased down by Blankenship, and he'll pry that ball out. And almost got back behind Parla Piano and Caleb Miller ahead. And this will get back behind the Shawnee defense, but not for long. Jack Tenwaldy tends to that round ball for Shawnee. And it'll ricochet back behind him again. Noah Shine turns it back at field. Now Mateo Facillo comes into the middle for Shawnee to settle things down for a moment. To Sam Tenwaldi. Colin Shine in the middle for the Indians to Mateo Facillo. Darts in between a couple defenders. Fires this to the far right for Luca Facillo. Luca from the top of 15. Goes to Cody Miller. Good use of the hand, keeping that ball at his feet. But it'll leak back for Shawnee again. There goes Noah Scheid. Had an opening to the net, but wisely pulls it back. Goes for Alex McGuire. He sends it towards Luca Facillo. Tried to okay. adjust midair and send that towards the net, but it goes wide to the right. Well, and this Indians team, you know, not hurting, you know, for talent all over the field here. Um, but you can tell their, their attack's a little bit different without Austin Miller in the middle, you know, just with his size and his ability to, to adjust in the air um, and the way he does. And another shot off to the right there by the Indians team. But, you know, it's just a little bit different here. You know, we'll see if Kenton, while Austin Miller is on the bench, see if they can take advantage of this and gain a little p possession and, and get some shots on target. Yeah, they have a lot of speed out there, but it's nice to have that speed and that size at the same time. Big piece of this success. Again, Kenton and Shawnee, both with 10 wins on the year, state ranked, top of the Western Buckeye League soccer standings. Playing for the league title here tonight. And so far for Shawnee, they have the one goal advantage. Took just about 12 minutes into the, the match for that first goal to be scored. The young man that scored it right now having to watch it. They tend to him still on that sideline. They maybe get the angle dressed up, but see if we get him back out here. Austin Miller. Over to Coda Miller for Shawnee. After Kenton played it for just a few moments towards their third of the field. There goes Mateo Facillo in the middle. Feeds towards Luca, but it's knocked out of there by Joel Bowman. And four back there for Kenton, though. Done a good job considering all the pressure that has been on them for much of this half. And to allow one goal basically off a header and somewhat of a set play, that something to hang your hat on here in the first 40 minutes. Yeah, we'll see. Kenton had a little bit of possession there. Um, was able to, to connect a couple passes, but just with this Shawnee team, they're you know just so quick to the ball. You know, once again, you know they played it through and not able to connect on that pass possession. But it just seems like they win the ball so quickly. You know, they lose it and then man, they got it right back. So um, we'll see if they can continue. Um, as you said, this Kenton defense just kind of withstand the storm mm -hmm. and see if they can get to the second half only down one goal. They withstood that attack there. It'll be Devin Hastings to send it down for Kenton. Puts the ball on the ground. See if they can connect a couple of more passes here. Down for Rary, but Shawnee will knock it back and forth. Miller looking for it. Couldn't quite get there in time. This will be a Kenton ball. They'll throw it in as it leaves the boundary. The Colby Quay back on the pitch for the Wildcats. And Deffa ball to header. Ferrari looking for some space. Played it back for Ethan Yoder. Yoder. And a good stop for Coda Miller. 
Now for Quay in the corner, it's going to get bumped just north of the flag, and they're saying going to say it went south of it, making a corner kick here for Kenton. An opportunity here for Kenton to get up the pitch as we see. Uh, he wasn't even convinced he was going to have a corner. No, <laughs> no, but it looks like here is seems like he must have a pretty good throw in because we got five Kenton Wildcats in the box and almost just as good as a corner kick there and souvenir. Yeah, absolutely. Great catch by that fan. <laughs> Back to Seth Manns. He'll drop this on the ground for Colby Quay and could not square that up to the net. As we're approaching seven and a half to play in this opening half. With Shawnee leading Kenton one to nothing. Great facility here as always to come to for Shawnee. And See the, the heritage that they've built over the last several years. The signs coming in with all their league titles, sectionals and districts and the, the regional trips. Such a good tradition that they built here in Kenton just as much recently too. But right now this league has belonged to Kenton or belonged to Shawnee as Kenton tries to rip it back. They'll have to come from behind to do that tonight. That's the official making sure that Shawnee can't play quickly if it's not in the right spot. It's going to be Alex McGuire doing this kick. It'll go to Tate Bender. Just got in the game, and we have contact between a Bender and Manns get together. Real physical part of this first half now. This meaningful league game. Both teams unbeaten. And I mean, only nine goals allowed all year by Kenton, so not a, a comfortable spot for them to be in. It's going to be knocked ahead and off target. The tie for Kenton this year was to Bath, and that is a game that, you know, Bath right now near the, the bottom of the WBL, probably one they would love to have back. Maybe one or two opportunities there would have changed the result. And the only, the two losses, one to Lexington, where that one you can kind of, uh, you, you can kind of just shrug at, and well, that, that happens to a lot of people. Um, and then to Bluffton. Bluffton, another one of those legacy programs in the area. Yeah, team not, you know, our team that is accustomed to going down to regionals, and we've seen that. You know, just like Shawnee in the last couple of years is a team that's been down there. So, you know, a loss to them, like you said, is, is a, uh, you know, an opportunity to just play against, you know, teams that you would most likely see in the tournament. Now, obviously being in different divisions, but just seeing that quality um, over time, you know, you want your team to play against those type of teams and prepare and, and learn from. Mm -hmm. That's one of, the, one of the nice things about soccer as a sport as a whole. The, the programs that are very successful year in and year out, they do not shy away from playing top-notch competition each and every year. You look at, look at Shawnee and both Kent in, that, in, the, in their own right, they have every ability to say, you know what, we'll see Lexington in the tournament, but they make it a point to put that program and other programs like, you know, St. Francis de Sales and, and among others that are just a little bit outside that you might see in, in a regional tournament because it, it all becomes about the, the tournament path for them and being able to play that good competition and ready yourself for that. And it, it win a league title along the way, that is just as important, but obviously a bigger picture for many of these programs each and every year. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we know with WBL soccer, it's going to be physical. You know, you got skilled players, but, you know, playing those top-tier teams um, in the state of Ohio only makes you better. You know, prepares you, like you said, for teams that you're going to face, you know, maybe not necessarily around here all the time, um, but when you get to regionals and if you want to make that run to state is you got to play quality competitions. And like you said, is these programs that, you know, really mm. have it together are willing to travel and get out of their comfort zone a little bit and play those top-tier teams. Okay. Yep. 
And when it becomes more, more postseason focused, you can do that where, you know, honestly, it looks like Football is another sport that could be heading that direction with the expanded postseasons, and you have those. Some some leagues have up to three non-conference games, some with two, some with one, and you could be much more creative with that non-league schedule. You know, look at a team like Wapakoneta that puts Marion Local on the schedule. Hey, that's fine with us. Go and test ourselves regardless of division there, but. Look at them, and that's their only loss of the year. You kind of forget. <laughs> oh, that, if it wasn't for the scheduling, they'd be an undefeated program. But I got to tell you what, they're better for it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know it. These games, you know, that are seven zero, seven one. You know, yeah, fan may enjoy it. You know, the mom yeah. and dad may enjoy it. But you know, if we're looking for postseason, you know, it's not realistic. You know, to play these games where you're just blowing out teams, mm -hmm. and um, you know, you want to challenge yourself. And every coach. Every quality coach is, you know, looking and going, you know, who can I play that that's going to challenge us? And really the first great opportunity yeah. there by Kenton, um, by number four, Ethan Yoder. Got a good strike on the ball, um, but uh, the Indians goalkeeper was up to the task. Smothered by Jack Tenwaldy with the big stop. Now, see what Shawnee can do. There's a bounce that goes their way to Luca Facillo. He is right now being crashed down by a whole host of Wildcats. And still is able to wrestle the ball back into his team's favor. There goes Luca, or excuse me, that's Mateo Facillo that just had the last foot on it. And well, then we got a and foul there, there as Kenton defender, I believe number 17, Aiden Wood. Got a little push in the back and Shawnee Goes quick as they've done multiple times today is they don't want this Kenton defense time to set up and you know they were able to go quick and ask Kenton now here see if they can counter quickly. Here's Def of ball goes down. Tackle there by Scheid. Here's Tate Bender in the middle for the Indians. And just kind of playing keep away here in the in the circle in the final minute. Content with one nothing right now, but plenty of time to get another. Luca Facillo from about 25 yards out. Goes to McGuire. Alex passes to that right side. Looking to get some penetration and knocked oh, away. Well, Shawnee continuing to just be patient, you know, with a minute left. You know, and see the fans a little bit, you know, getting excited, wanting them to push, but Shawnee's continuing to play their style of play um, where they possess the ball and try to move it side to side and see if they can use their skilled players to attack. And they did just that and ball just went over the end line. Couple of changes in the Kenton lineup here for the Troy final Brown. few ticks of the half. Troy Brown will do the honors here for Kenton. Kick it near that sideline. Now pretty much run us down to the end of this opening half as the ball sneaks near the Shawnee bench area. These last few seconds will take us down to halftime. Austin Miller's score 12 minutes into the game, our only score of the game right now. And Shawnee with the advantage on the home savings and the loan of Kenton scoreboard. In the first half, halftime coming up. We'll come back with the second 40 minutes after this on WOSN. One nothing Shawnee and Going into the second half on our scoreboard presented by Home Savings and Loan of Kenton. Committed to serving our community since 1888. Offering infinite opportunities and services you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Well, they, they cashed in at 28.01 in the first half thanks to an Austin Miller header. And that is the only score of the game for Shawnee leading this contest. Again, one to zero over Kenton. 10-2-1 Wildcats, 6-0-1 in the WBL. 
And Shawnee at 10-1-1, as 7-0 in the league. Both teams with one conference game left after this one is complete. So this very well will decide who lifts the crown at the end of the year. Garrett Mansfield alongside Josiah Stober, happy to be with you here this evening, bringing you WBL soccer, a physical first half Josiah, but so far so good as Shawnee is able to cash in on the one big opportunity that they had early. Yeah, you know, two, we've seen, you know, in that first half, two different styles of play. Shawnee, we know, likes to possess the ball, likes to move the ball side to side, you know, move it through the middle, look to switch it, see if they can get it on their, uh, in their width to where they can use some of that speed and then cross it into the box to a player like Austin Miller, who um, just to, to mention is uh, not sure if he's going to come back in, was injured in that first half and uh, didn't start here in the second half. So we'll see if um, the Indians are, uh, coaching staff are just trying to, to rest them, knowing that they got a 1-0 lead here and they've maintained control of this game um, so far um, with their possession. But um, looking at the visiting Wildcats team, really only one good shot on goal in the first half, and it came late. Um, you know, a strike across the box, but the goalkeeper was able to handle it pretty easily. Um, but for the majority of it, it's been them trying to use their counter attack um, where they tried to get the ball up quickly. And, um, but the Shawnee defense has been up to the challenge all night. Almost got one through there for, by Luca Vasillo into the top crossbar. So two minutes into the half, already a nice one for Shawnee, but Kenton. Planted here in the middle. Ethan Yoder gonna bounce back and forth. And some contact with Rary. And there goes Alex McGuire. He angles out to the left. Gets bumped ahead to Luca Facillo. And right there is Seth Manns to take it back for Kenton. And possession isn't gonna last long. Sam Tenwaldi heads it ahead and they're gonna get him on a foul. And for the most part, our officials have allowed them to play tonight. Um, both teams, you know, very physical, um, used to the contact. Uh, Kenton maybe called for a few more uh, fouls tonight, but trying to slow down this attack of this Indians team. But officials saw there a little bit of chicken wing thrown out there and was in a good position to see it. And opportunity here now for Kenton as they play that long ball once again, see if they can get to it before it runs out. And it, and they are not able to. Okay. Gives it back to Shawnee here. Just a couple of minutes into our second half. And Jack Tenwaldi will line up the goal kick for the Indians. And another boomer. Picked up by Kenton Zayden Wood. And a counter daffa ball, he'll play it back. Goes to Devin Hastings. And Kenton just has not been able to get through the teeth of that midfield even. Not even not even back to the defense, but not even to the midfield. And there, there's a foul taken. Aiden Wood gets that forearm extended. And now Mateo Facillo trying to get the correct uh, measurement out, trying to get the defender backed up because he should have a little bit more space on this direct. Uh, Aiden Wood did a, you know, what you're supposed to as a, from the coaching standpoint, slow down that attack, not allowing these Indians to play it quickly. And uh, the official yelled at him a little bit to tell him to get back. And eventually we got the ball into the box. And now the Indians once again have the ball just outside the 18. Colin Scheid fires that one in and held on to by the mitts of MJ Colson. Looked like Shine was gonna take nothing into something there for a moment. Well, wow, what a strike there um, off the volley and um, you know just quick, short passes that allow that space and was able to, to one touch off the volley, but a, a great save there by the Kenton goalkeeper. Ethan Yoder gives way to Connor Deffaball. And kicked back towards the final four for Shawnee. Ken has not been able to really get past the, the last line of defense much. There goes Sam Tenwaldi. 
And the feet get tangled there with Jill Bowman. But Tate Bender keeps it ahead. And to Mateo Facillo. And Mateo right in between three white shirts. And it'll be picked up by Aiden Wood. Then they'll turn it over. Well, as we talked about just earlier in this broadcast, it's just, you know, this Indian team just suffocating um, this Kenton Wildcats team, not allowing them a whole lot of time, you know, to possess the ball and get their head up. Every time there's a turnover, you know, it just seems like the Indians are, are right there to collect the ball and they're back again to attacking. Into the 34 minute mark of the second half. Shawnee still holding to the one nothing lead and the Black Hits tonight. Playing here at home and knock it out of there and it'll be picked up again for Shawnee. And there takes off Aiden Wood for Kenton. But Luca Facilla doesn't let him advance too far. And the throw in headed out of bounds immediately. Colby Quay, the last to touch that for Kenton. Now a throw in for Scheid. To Alex McGuire in the middle for Shawnee. Toes it in the direction of Mateo Facillo. And Austin Roseback comes and picks up the possession. A good overlapping run there by a Shawnee teammate. Just wasn't able to find him, but you know, you just kind of see just how comfortable this Indians team are on the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, as they look to attack is, you know, they constantly have their head up looking for their teammates, seeing if they can attack and find those gaps in this Canton defense. And they're just so quick, um, especially even on this transition to, to win the ball back and maintain possession for this Indians team. Caleb Miller knocks it towards Jack Tedwaldy. He'll pass this left for Noah Scheid. Ricochet goes to Conlon Scheid. And it's a defensive help for Kenton. Well, we haven't mentioned Jack Tenmoldy's name a whole lot tonight. You know, hasn't had a whole lot to do, but you know, it's really nice to have a goalkeeper that can distribute so well. You just saw on that last kick, you know, he was on this uh, near side of his box and was able to switch the point of attack so quickly um, and force this Kenton defense to shift from one side of the pitch to the other. And, um, you know, it's just so nice to have that, you know, wall, brick wall in the back to support you and, um, you know, be part of the attack. Yeah, that extra skill, I'm sure, is extremely beneficial for Shawnee to have. Because it really starts, when you have so many goal kicks in a game, it really starts off the offensive attack, getting that first pass out cleanly and also on target. A couple of changes for Shawnees. They get Luca Facillo a quick breather and a Kenton goal kick. Sam Tentwaldy has that off the head and it'll be given back to Kenton. Shawnee's going to play it near the sideline again and forces throw-ins as they inch their way down that far right sideline for Kenton. Okay, and continues to try to use that quick counterattack any chance they get as we see those quick throw-ins, but just unable to really connect three, four, or five passes together all night, and um, that's what's just making it so difficult for them to kind of get in the flow of their attack. Able to change the field quickly. Luca Facillo back on. Luca Facillo comes back out for Shawnee. Quick Luke little breather. And yeah, he'll throw this back in for the Indians. Trying to get teammate in position. Passes here to the near side for Noah Neth. Centered for Caleb Miller. Caleb goes to the opposite end. Noah Scheid up for Luca Facillo. Looking for an angle. Passed into the box. 
trying to go to Mateo, but disrupted by Kenton. And Rary knocks that ball deep into Shawnee's end. Noah Shine Shine. will clear it away, so a throw in for Kenton as Shawnee's defense can get back there and help out. Seth Mann's going over to take a throw. Well, another physical play there by Parker Rary. As you saw, a lot of the fans wanted, wanted a call there, but um, you know, was first to the ball and has a little bit of size advantage over that Indians defender and um, got the ability for his teammates to, to gain a little possession and, and push up higher up pitch. Another foul against Kenton. That's one of those fouls we call a good foul. Slow down the attack of Shawnee and allows your defense to mm -hmm. get back and get set and back into the, its shape a little bit. I'm sure the Shawnee coaches wanted a card there, but none was given, and Shawnee now once again maintains possession. Alex McGuire controlling it in the middle. Through some traffic. He goes down 17 yards away. Kenton just content, just clearing it out, but Connor Deffelball hoping for a good bounce. Caleb Miller takes the opportunity away. Good diving stop. By 40 there in the middle for, for Shawnee. Back to Parla Piano. Give to Colin Scheid. And now Kenton just booms it down. A long run for Colby Quay to get there. But he did. Kind of didn't allow Shawnee to clear it away. The Indians flip it fast. She makes that a unit in the back end for Shawnee even more impressive. They, they all have big legs. They can clear that ball out when they have an opportunity to give a little bit of a run up. Sam can hold with it. Uh oh, unforced turnover there by the Shawnee Indians. You haven't seen that a whole lot tonight, giving the ball away there in the middle, but um, they did a really good job of once again winning it back here and see if they can force Kenton into another turnover here. They're going to bounce it down and near Defo ball, but Parla Piano pops it up. Yeah, pretty much just header balls here for Kenton <laughs> in the last couple of attempts. Good job adjustment, keeping it up. Ethan Yoder, keep it inbounds. And got a wrap up here up in front with Parker Rary put the arms around a Caleb Miller. Fans up in arms here, and Miller just kind of shrugged his shoulders. And, and yeah, it's been a physical game. It's been happening for a while. And, and they're going to get just a direct kick. No card here, even though they're delegating a little bit. The officials saying it's a throw in, so no, no foul. Not even that. On that nope. last play, um, I do think the official might have been pointing down the line and may have missed some of that extracurricular activity at the mm -hmm. end of that. But One of those regular season two-man crews that sometimes you don't see the whole thing, but a, a postseason three-man crew definitely would have had something to say about that. Okay. Luca Mateo or Luca Facillo bombs a shot over to the left. Toronto Lopez on for Kenton. I think Parker Rary definitely knows he probably got away with one there and we'll have to keep things tight. They're going to be watching him a little closer, but for now he'll head to the Kenton bench. Well, and you got to think too, you know, I like to, you know, as a coach, you know, sometimes we get on officials, but especially on a soccer pitch, as you said, a two-man crew is, you got to think, this is, you know, a field that's 120 yards long by 70 yards wide. There's a lot of green space, you know, to keep an eye on. So you only got, you know, four eyes looking on this entire pitch. Um, so, you know, you kind of got to watch what you're, you know, saying about them because they don't see everything. This one, as it continues to ramp up here, officials are going to get in between. And I think at this point, the only way you get this slow down and stopped is by carding it. And they're going to stop everything right here. The emotions running hot 
for both Kenton and Shawnee after that takedown. Looked like Vasilla was going to have an open lane to the to the goal, and instead it turns into contact that turns it over back to Kenton. And Mateo trying to plead his case. Play your game, Black. Play your game. Play soccer, boys. All right. Fireworks here midway through the second half. They'll knock it back in, but it's almost one of those that Shawnee, after a couple of missed missed fouls, missed opportunities, well, you, you get them back by putting one in the back of the net, and that's really what they'll focus on here soon. And Kenton just has not had any rhythm to be able to do that in their own rights, at least here the first halfway through this quarter, or through this half. Well, um, we hate to see, you know, a player like Austin Miller out. You know, we haven't seen him since early on. You know, in that first half, has went out with an injury. But, you know, in a way, you know, it could be a good thing for Shawnee is, you know, they're forced to play against a really good competition, and they got to learn how to play without him. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, we hope it's not a, an injury that keeps him out for very much of the year. But, you know, really for, you know, the last about 30 minutes of, of gameplay, Shawnee's had to kind of figure out how do we attack and how do we, you know, create our offense, um, you know, without, you know, probably the, the league player of the year in the middle there. Here, Luca Vasillo trying to penetrate and a sliding stop by MJ Colson. Colson gets there. Kenton's keeper holds onto the ball for a moment. Over to Seth Manns and See if the Wildcats can get away, but it's wrestled out. And contact again, heading back to Kenton. Wondering if the officials over there are seeing maybe Shawnee initiating some of this contact and waiting for a return. Yep, I agree with you on that call. I think it was a good call because the Shawnee player looked for the contact, um, you know, and didn't play the ball at all. So looks like we may have an injury here for this Indians team as it looks like he's able to lightly jog um, off the field is we'll get a sub here. Lineup change there for Shawnee and he's got to look for look for this crew to just take control of this game back. Only takes one call to do that. 23-03 left on this second half clock and a one nothing lead for Shawnee. A first half goal by Austin Miller. So far all the damage needed to this point. Regardless of anything, the last handful of minutes, with that in mind, Kenton has not been able to get the ball into the box with much success tonight. And it's that Shawnee defensive attack that's done its job. And you see another example of it right there and from the midfielders getting back there and getting that ball back into their grasp. And a slight miss hit in the middle by McGuire, saved by Facillo. It'll go to Colin Scheid there in the middle. Excuse me, that's Austin Roseback. Plays it back to Tate Bender. and Something that Shawnee has the advantage of doing, having that contentment to just come on back. Let's, hey, you know, let's go back to Jack here in the box and hit the reset button on this possession and see if you get Kenton to kind of move, move away and spread the field out. Yeah, what a good ball there to number 12, Connor Defaball. Got an Up angle. To here to get it into the box here. And just off target, tried to head it on down. Now as Colby Quay comes out for Ethan Yoder. Goes to Quay on that right side, turns the edge near the flag, loses it down below the, the goal line, and it went off of Shawnee last. And it's going to be a corner kick for Kenton. They're going to sub two in before this as we hit the halfway point of the half. Well, Kent has a, had a lot of opportunities tonight. A corner kick is an opportunity here to see if they can get some of their, um, you know, taller players into the box, see if they can get ahead on it. And, 
you know, once again, you know, without the size of Austin Miller in the, in the box, you know, an opportunity for Kenton to use some of their advantage. And really a poor ball mm -hmm. played into the box off the corner. Bounced away really quickly. Shawnee throw in. Now Shawnee will throw Actually, back in. Yeah, but instead they'll place it down and they'll have a kick, direct kick here. It looks like Colin Schein will line this up for Shawnee. And a real booming kick. Kenton does a nice job keeping it in front of him. Bad bounce would have been danger there for the Wildcats if Luca Facillo got that. And there's a foul against Kenton. Alex McGuire puts the ball down and quickly back into play. Passes to Matteo Facillo on the left edge. Fires us down to the box for Luca, and he tried to rear that one up and deflect it away. Here we Troy Brown on the deflection. He's going to be guarding Luca again. He goes down inside the box, and they got a whistle against Kenton. And they're going to call this just. Clock is done. Seem to be just outside the box, or are they going to call it inside? I believe they called a penalty inside the box. Yep. So it'll be a penalty kick for the Indians. Big chance to increase the lead. 1944 left in the second half. And Matteo Facillo will line it up. Four goals on the year, defending League Player of the Year in the WBL. And the senior with a chance to double Shawnee's lead. MJ Colson backed up into inside the bars right now. And they're gonna, gonna sort a couple of other things out here before allowing the penalty kick to be done. Looks like they thought about a card, but puts it back in his pocket. Yeah, the officials getting everybody lined up, making sure nobody's encroaching on that space inside the 18. So here again, Mateo Facillo taking the penalty kick. And he nailed it. Two nothing Shawnee after the penalty kick. 19.43 to go in the contest. We'll take a quick timeout on WOSN. Scoreboard tonight reads 2-0 in favor of Shawnee, and that scoreboard is presented by Home Savings and Loan of Kenton, committed to serving our community since 1888, offering infinite opportunity and services you can count on. Home Savings and Loan, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Came down to a penalty kick that last try, Josiah, but Shawnee, after all of that, I don't know even what know what to really tussle. call it. You know, <laughs> it, it. Really, it's been a 20-minute tussle. It felt like that. You know, those first half of the of the second half, and Shawnee finally prevails, gets a penalty kick, no, and Matteo Facillo makes Kenton pay for it. And now a two-goal advantage must feel very big right now. Well, I think that you know last call. Um, in the box that gave Shawnee the penalty was kind of a, you know, almost a continuation of the last 20 minutes you were talking about of, you know, a lot of just those hard fouls um, on both from both teams and the official I think kind of got tired of, of seeing those, you know, those little kicks and those type of things, um, and finally called that penalty. So, you know, Shawnee you know, had the opportunity to, to extend this lead and you know has really been the better squad. Um, so far tonight, as we see, you know, both teams, there's a lot of pulling and tugging of jerseys and arms, you know, as we go, you know, but, you know, kind of what we expected um, on the night is two teams that have battled each other for the last four years, you know, 
this is this is the game, you know, yeah. of, of the season in their conference. So, you know, we kind of expected the physicality and, you know, maybe in some points has gotten a little bit out of control, but hopefully the officials have kind of reeled it back in. Yeah, like I said earlier, it only takes one call to do that. And a couple of changes in the Kenton lineup. Defa ball, Yoder are out. Mand and Rary in. And it looks like down there for Shawnee, there's a good sign looking at the Indians. Yeah, they have Austin Miller standing in there to come in. Been off for better part of the last half of play. Went down with a apparent ankle injury and he's back out there for Shawnee. And it's a good sign for the Shawnee squad. Maybe get him out here, get him moving and they just Maybe not have him out there for very long, but at least to test and see where he is. Yeah, and almost maybe a little surprising, especially with that second goal. Was not sure if you know they were going to bring him back in, but I imagine that the type of competitor that he is, that he was probably in coach's ear, going, "I'm fine, I'm fine, I can play here," and um, we're going to see here um, how well those ankles hang up. As we assume it was an ankle injury, um, nothing confirmed, um, but as we can see, he's out there moving. And we'll see what happens when he's got the ball at his feet. And even if he doesn't, he's still going to draw attention. As Sam Tenwaldy with a big fire, knocked down by Colson. And it took a couple attempts to get to it. Mateo Facillo almost cleaned up the rebound. But a big time save for Kenton to keep this a 2 nothing affair. Here's Austin Miller to give to Facillo. And he'll leak this one inside the box. Knocked away Water. by Troy Brown, and a corner kick will be in order for the Shawnee Indians. And Alex McGuire heading to the corner. Well, and almost a little more spark of energy with Austin Miller coming back into the game. You know, see this Indians team feel a little bit more confidence going forward, and I you know, can't say how much more because they've had a lot of confidence yep. going forward um, all night, but you know, having their their you know all conference player come back in and leading goal scorer, um, you know, just says a lot. And um, but just shows you know the type of bench you know and depth this Indians team have for their their you know star player out, and they continue to just play um, you know like they've done all night. Last try by Sam Tenwaldi to get that in there for Shawnee, and a good stop again for Colson. So head back here, about 15 and a half to go in the contest. Shawnee on the cusp of clinching at least a, no worse than their fourth straight WBL title with the finishing a victory tonight. It improved to 8-0 in league play. And it would give Kenton their first defeat in conference action. They also have a tie and with the points, because that's how they line things up. You get those three points for a victory, then the one points for a, or one point for a tie. And the way the points would be distributed for Shawnee, they would have plenty to hold on to the WBL title for yet another year in a row. It'd be four straights and 36, again, 36 matches in a row. And the WBL that Shawnee has been victorious. A couple of 9 0 seasons, the last three after an 8 1 year a couple of years back. We got a white, got a yellow card, getting Kenton's Aiden Wood out of the game. Starting to see a lot of this add up and continue to unravel for Kenton. Yeah, a little excessive there, I believe, on that challenge. And like I said, the officials are trying to get, you know, the game back under control. You know, we especially don't want any injuries um, at this type, at this time of the year as tournaments just around the corner. Um, so these officials want to make sure that they're, we're playing in the, the, the you know, wall of the, the game. Yeah, definitely. You're at that point where, at least to this point, you've been able to, see pretty clearly what 
Shawnee has been able to accomplish just holding on to the ball, possessing, and Kenton has not, again, not been able to get much going and hasn't really shown the, the patience just yet to try to work it upfield, put some passes together, get lined up, find an angle. Well, another good strike there from Matea Facillo. You know, just those tight touches, you know, knows what he wants to do with the ball, you know, gets himself in a good position and, you know, almost looked like he was trying to curve it into that top corner and just went a little bit wide of the target. Sam Tentwaldi and now Coda Miller finds the ball. Mateo Facillo to Luca, back to Mateo and to the left for McGuire and he's gonna sail this one to the right. Shawnee okay. still showing some aggression up by two. Troy Brown, we I keep finding a little space in that midfield. You know, really haven't got a whole lot, you know, inside the box, but they're willing to strike it, you know, in that 18 to 25 yards out. And, you know, you do that enough, it's going to force these Kenton defenders, you know, to come out and play you. And that's when you start finding those lanes behind the back line. Comes a toss back in. Do you so that throw in, so Nolan gives way to, or Kylan gives way to Noah Shine to throw in for Shawnee. 13 to play. Home savings and loan of Kenton scoreboard. With a 2 0 lead for the Indians. Kenton with a little bit of something going here. But Shawnee continues. To just not let anything go further. And it looks like we're going to have another yellow here. And they do. And they're just, I think at this point, this crew is just done with it. That time the call goes against Mitchell Stevens. Yellow card is to number 22, Mitchell Stevens. Stephen Piper coming on, replacing. Yeah, that actually might have been. And it was put on. I believe it was number Mance? 11. Mans, okay. Well, he's the one that stepped off that after that yellow two. card. But we, we're not really sure. <laughs> it's been one of those halves with a whole lot to sort out. Yeah. Really well, testing our abilities of. Uh, Sight lines at this point. <laughs> well, this goes in the high school game the too. You know, it's you know you can sub as many times as you want, um, unlike the college game where you're limited um, in your substitution. So uh, this coach, especially Kenton, has been really rotating players in, so making it difficult for us to see, yeah. um, you know, who was coming off and who's going on. Not necessarily a bad thing. Just in that yeah. scenario, it was like, well, you have like, <laughs> you have about three or four changes and a card, and a lot happening. Go to Miller to Sam Tenwaldi. Tenwaldi lets it fly. It's a little high. And Colson not get a piece of it, so it'll be a goal kick for Kenton. Yeah, they're finding a lot of success in that same area. The last about three shots have all come, you know, within about six yards of each other. So, um, you know, Shawnee's continuing, you know, not satisfied with this 2-0 lead as they continue to push and continue to play some really solid defense in the back. And, you know, we can't say enough. You know, we talk a lot about these, you know, that attack going forward for Shawnee. But, you know, this defense, that back line is really solid. They have virtually taken away that 15-yard box away completely for Kenton. They have not allowed it. Much action down below, just one shot on goal in the game for the Wildcats. That's where Kenton, or where, where Shawnee, some of their best defense is played with how they possess the ball and really take opportunities away by, well, not letting you share that, that round thing they're, they're kicking around. Yep, you can't score if you don't have the ball. Yeah, you're, you got it. Really taking away all the extra bounces, too. And uh, another facet of the game. 
Sam Tenwaldi trying to wrestle that away from Stephen Piper. Still trying to chase somebody down. And this is going to get booted out of bounds. Noah Nath will throw in for Shawnee. Vasillo split the defense. Gives up to Alex McGuire. Back to Noah Scheid. And a takeaway for Kenton, Aiden Wood. And really the first time all night, Kenton's had some numbers going forward, but Shawnee once again comes back and does a really good job as, you know, they do, they really do a good job of helping each other too. You know, if one player gets out of position, you know, they're, they're able to, to track back and use a lot of that speed to get back quickly. And, you know, once again, just not allowing Kenton to have any sustainability um, with the ball at their feet. And Luca Facillo had an opening and pushed it just to the right. Good nifty move, about a yard deep into the box. And couldn't quite square it up. Under 10 minutes to play, and Shawnee holding to a 2 0 lead. Penalty kick score for Mateo Facillo, the goal of this half. Austin Miller scored in the first half for Shawnee. If you haven't noticed, Miller came back onto the pitch a while ago, already back off. Really a short shift for him to see where that is, and no better action like game action to test those legs out after some contact earlier in the game. Uh, I think it's just a, a good call to, to take him off the field at this point. You're up to nothing. The game's pretty physical, and the worst thing that could happen is you allow him to, to, to injure that um, injure that ankle, you know, even more. Um, but just knowing you're, you know, now you're holding on to a 2-0 lead, you know, might be different if it's 1-0, you know, but I think it was a good decision by the coaches to let him go out and just test it out and then uh, get him off the pitch. Vasillo and Wood get tied up. Uh, number 17 for Kenton. He really needs to watch it. Aiden Wood is, he's already on a yellow card. Uh, you know, you don't want to, give the officials a reason to give you another yellow and you know then you could be missing some game time. Yep. Final eight of the contest here at Shawnee to dictate the WBL title of 2022. Shawnee looking for a four-peat since Kenton last won the crown in 2018. And they give to Mateo Facillo. Gave it up to Luca. Back to Mateo, right side of the box. Little contact, but he has an opening. And look at those mitts by MJ Colson. Yeah, Colson was in good position protecting his near side post. And ball comes in, and he was able to catch it and not fumble at all. So, but another foul on Shawnee here. Give the ball to Ken. Mans will do the. Free kick, lines it up just on his side of midfield. So as we roll on to seven minutes in the game. Gotta get a couple of players down the field for Kenton. And there goes Manns. Deflected about 20 yards out and then back the way they don't really want to be going. And here they go. Back to Manns, and here's Aiden Wood. Plays ahead, goes to Deffa Ball. And Wood back to Manns. He's got an opening. Has a good pass up front. And how about that? Good clean shot off by Stephen Piper, but a diving stop by Jack Tanwaldi. One of the first times tonight he's really been tested, but he showed up for Shawnee. Well, and really the first time all night that Kenton's connected three or four passes together, you know, found, uh, you know, number nine in a great position. And 
Uh, the first time really the defense allowed a lot of space for him to get that shot off. But uh, once again, just a great save there by Jack Tenwaldi. You know, was able to see it cleanly and uh, got his mitts on it and uh, didn't let it go. Now that's a pretty strong shot from Piper too. But a good save. So far, a shutout again for Tenwaldi. Back to back. Van Wert and Ottawa Glandorf, the last two matches out there for Shawnee. Gave one up to Marie Mount out of Cincinnati back on the 24th of September. And then now they go back to their matchup against Napoleon to find another goal. So just one allowed in the last five plus matches for. Shawnee Indians, another opportunity for Seth Manns, and he just kind of a, looked like he was trying to give it up and feed a player over there near the right side of the oh, net, man. and then it gets knocked up and Shawnee, well out of play. Look, he was trying to go the, the selfless way, go to another player and a teammate, but it looked like he had an opening himself. Well, Kenton, you know, in this last about minute, minute and a half of found themselves with a little bit of space, you know, to take a couple of shots on frame and just haven't been able to connect. And, you know, you, you think as a coach is why haven't we been able to find this, you know, for the, rem the rest of the game, but uh, a little bit more sustained possession for this Kenton team. And uh, they're finding it here as there's another foul on Shawnee. And we don't have the, the numbers, but there's been quite a few fouls yeah. tonight. Last one there on Austin Rosebeck. And moments before, Hunter Drury checked in for the first time for Shawnee. Trying to get into the action. Caleb Miller trying to track down this ball with Austin Piper connected. And they lock arms and wrap up a little bit. And You're in, King Shawnee. So Stephen Piper. and. Caleb Miller gets tied up. Shawnee will continue to throw in. We get to the four minute mark of the game. Mateo Pasillo is the throw. Play back to Miller and play a strong, strong defense all night. It's another last year seeing a lot of this team and Miller as a freshman played well beyond his years in the back row for the Indians. Now, now as a sophomore, one of the leaders of the team in the, that back row, played really well tonight alongside Ethan Parlopiano and Noah Scheid and Noah Neff all back there, all in their classmen. They'll have that whole group back again Great next year. And the area teams, they, they look down the roster and who, who do we not have to worry about next year and things like that. And then you remind yourself, oh yeah, they, <laughs> Eight or nine of the starters every single year seem to find their way back and for Shawnee. Caleb Miller. It's like they Caleb find extra Caleb. eligibility or something yeah. like that, but that's, that's obviously not the way it goes. Uh, they don't get a COVID year in high school? No, they do not. Feels like a lot of these, a lot of these Shawnee players have been in the program or been in, just that goes just, right just to the, just to the right of, of the net, that was attempted by Caleb Miller and it went off of the keeper, Colson. So it's a corner kick for Shawnee. Anytime the team on defense touches it last and it goes beyond their own goal line, that's where these corner kicks arise for the team on their attack side of the field. So here's Shawnee to set it up. Luca Facilla will line it up. Luca Facilla. Well, and as you notice, you know, we're kind of wondering why the, the clock has stopped. Well, Shawnee, um, with the lead here, um, had a sub. And once you sub with the lead, which the clock didn't stop on that, or didn't start back up on that throw in. Um, as you can see here, some fans trying to get the clock going, going again. But uh, if you sub and you're in the lead here in the last few minutes of a game, then the clock has to stop. And they'll do it all over again down here in the corner. Get Sam Tenwaldi down there with a teammate for Shawnee. Confusion and frustration. And out throw in on the way for Shawnee. They, they play it near the sideline. And the clock continues to roll. But the 
Indians up by a pair. Got to throw in off the back end of a teammate, and there we go. This is what we're used to seeing. It's quite interesting, something you don't see every single day. Not sure if you work on that in, in <laughs> practice, how to throw it off your teammate's back. Yep, and, and try to play it off when you don't have a lot of space there. Long run, Caleb Quay gets an opening look for Kenton, tries to center up a pass, but Colin Scheid knocks that out for Shawnee. And the Indians, as we, we get near the end of this game, Josiah, and you've, if we complimented them all night about how they possess the ball, they just do a lot of things so well. Not a surprise why they're once again 10 and one and one and about to be 11 and one and WBL champs for yet the fourth year in a row. Well, this team is very well coached. Um, you can tell that um, as um, Coach Guatman said in his keys to the game is they wanted to play their style um, tonight. And, you know, there was a lot of fouls and uh, definitely a very physical game. But uh, Shawnee continued to just play their game um, throughout the night, which means they possess the ball. They keep it on the ground. They try to move it side to side. And, um, you know, even when things don't go their way with an injury to their, their leading scorer, Austin Miller, um, they continue to fight um, and continue to, to move the ball side to side and, and, and play their game. So, you know, just to, um, you can see why they're the number six team in the state um, and just uh, being a top tier program, you know, that's been built over the last couple of years. Um, they just continue, you know, to, to chug away. And, you know, like you said, they continue to find these players every single year um, where, you know, they're not rebuilding, they're just reloading. Um, and they continue to do that tonight. And we see us as, you know, coming down to the last 40 seconds of this game is, you know, they're still in control. We run down the scoring tonight for Shawnee. Austin Miller score with 28-01 to go in the first half and a penalty kick at 19.43 of the second half by Mateo Facillo. Leads us to where the home savings and loan of Kenton scoreboard reads right now. And with this one, Shawnee will advance to 11-1-1 and 8-0 in the WBL. 6-1-1 is where Kenton will fall in Western Buckeye League play. 10-3-1 overall. And for the fourth consecutive season, the Shawnee Indians are going to be Western Buckeye League champions. They've proven to 8-0 with one game left to play, but they have the valuable points required, 24 points. They have that cushion going into their final WBL match of the year against rival Elida. And how about that? That's 37 consecutive WBL match wins. And they'll celebrate it here at home in front of their home fans. Yeah, congratulations to this Indians team. Well deserved. Um, they, they played hard tonight. They played physical. Um, you know, weathered some of these storms from this Kenton team. And, you know, you got to give it to Kenton. You know, a great year. The year's not over, but... You know, even in WBL, they continued to fight and had a really good season. As you said, still have one game to play, um, you know, but, you know, to come in here to a, to a hostile crowd, hostile environment, a great environment, um, you know, and, and to win um, another win for this Indians team, like you said, just the streak that they're on um, in the WBL. And, um, you know, congratulations to both teams and congratulations to this Shawnee Indians team on another WBL championship. Yep, we want to thank Coach Quatman and uh, Coach Bartlett for all their help before the game tonight. A athletic director here at Shawnee, Steve Owen, as well for coordinating everything over here at Shawnee. And we thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Home Savings and Loan of Kenton. Presenting our scoreboard tonight, serving our community since 1888, offering infinite opportunities and service. You can count on home savings and loan. Remember, FDIC, an equal housing lender. Also, thanks to our crew tonight, Jacob O'Neill running everything up here. Got his favorite hot dog in the eight county area here at the Shawnee Soccer Facility. Guy gave it a nine out of 10 for the second year in a row. It's top notch over here at Shawnee, and that's the food, and as well as the soccer on the field for the Indians tonight also. From Josiah Stover, I'm Garrett Mansfield saying good night on WOS said 2-0 the Shawnee Indians, the winners tonight, and WBL champs again in 2022.